So, welcome back everyone. Welcome to the, uh, the third and last part of today's lecture. Um, today, our, have, we've talked a lot about uh, databases, different databases that are out there. We've talked a little bit about how databases are structured and why they are useful and why they can be useful in R. Um, and um, I want to spend like the last 50 minutes or somewhere around that that we have to um, show you how you can get your data in R right so um, we want to talk about Biomark and of course if you want to have data in R and this data is available online and then of course you can manually search create your Excel file yeah, but this is kind of manual slave labor because you have to just copy paste stuff from from the website into your Excel file and kind of um, do it yourself um, and I've did this many, many times, right? Sometimes you run into a database where the database itself uh, does not provide a different way of getting your data. Yeah, so the data is in their database and the website is presenting you the data, but it presents it to you in a way uh, that you cannot easily bulk download it. Yeah, so th the problem here is, is that it's very error prone. Um, you can download bulk data via FTP right um, and that is usually the w way to go when you are doing bioinformatics is just go to things like ensemble go to the FTP site and say well um, give me the GFF file so the, the gene description file and then had this file will contain all the genes on the genome and of course this has m less chance of creating errors and but then the problem becomes is that all of these databases they store their data in a slightly different format in a slightly different different structure um, and because they do that uh, you end up with different data formats on your hard drive so you downloaded a file from Ensemble you've downloaded some files from Tremble and now you want to start merging this data in in each other and you really can because you have to load in the data in different ways because the format is different and one will have more columns um, sometimes they're they're it, it's not really obvious what the what the primary key is or what the uh, what the foreign key constraints are and so one of the best ways that I have found to get biological or biomolecular data into R is to use Biomart and Biomart is one of these tools which I use all the time um, so have Biomart can be used to retrieve your data directly into R um, and that has as an advantage that if the database gets updated or if genes get and new genes get discovered and added to the genome or new proteins get discovered and that when you rerun your analysis automatically this analysis is updated and that's one of these things that an FTP server doesn't do you download the file at 20th of January 2021 uh, and when you redo your analysis in in March or in April and then the data on your hard drive hasn't changed so you have to either go to the database again and again download this whole big file with data um, and that's one of these things where Biomart really really shines it it really gives you a, a very nice way of keeping your analysis up to date with the data which is currently in databases so Biomart um, allows you to query databases from R. So Biomart describes itself as a community driven project to provide unified access to distributed research data to facilitate the scientific uh, discovery process and it contains most if not all biologically relevant databases. So all big biological databases have a way to be queried via, um, via Biomart. Um, Biomart, uh, besides being available for R, it's also available for things like Perl, for Python. Um, you can query it using SOAP and REST and uh, you can even query it directly from an XML file. So it's a really, really good way of, of, of getting your data in a structured format and this format you can more or less decide yourself and so you never have to reformat things just based on the fact that the database changed um, and like you you have with FTP files or when you make the files yourself so there are some core concepts when you're dealing with Biomart um, so a Mart is an information provider so a Mart is kind of like a supermarket and the supermarket provides a certain type of information um, well it's not so much a supermarket it's more like a specialty store right so a specialty store um, sells for example shovels and another store sells clothing and then you have a third store and that sells books so uh, the Mart is the information provider so for example Ensemble is a Mart 
right? Because Ensemble is an information provider. An information provider, like a Mart, contains many, many different data sets, or can contain. Some of them contain only one data set, but stuff like Ensemble contains many different data sets. And so a data set in Ensemble is usually structured around an organism. And so you have, for example, the data set uh, mouse genes. You have cow genes, you have human genes, right? So those are different data sets. Another, the other three terms that we use here are more or less the way that you can query the data. Um, so we can ask for certain attributes. Yeah? So you connect to a MART and a data set, and then using the attributes, you can get or you can you can tell the information provider, I want to have this columns with this type of information, um, and I'm requesting that. Then you have filters. Filters are things which allow you to filter the data that you retrieve. For example, a filter could be um, the ID of the gene or the name of the gene or um, the location on the genome. Yeah, so that is a filter that you can apply and you can apply different filters and you can combine filters together to kind of filter down your data. And then you have things which are called values and those are the things that you are querying for. So just a little bit of terminology before we start diving into kind of how to now use Biomart. So for this example, and I'm not going to do this live, I was originally planning on doing this live, but the last week Ensemble and Biomart are having some serious connection issues. So then it would it could mean that we're sitting here five to ten minutes waiting for data to come back from Biomart. Um, so just to prevent that, I made slides for you guys and so that we can just go through the slides and, and we don't have to wait for queries to finish. Or um, if we're unlucky, the whole system is down, which is, it, it just happens, right? It's a community project, and so um, it, it has some funding, but it's not something like Amazon, which has a 99.999% uptime. So let's say that we want to investigate um, mice, right? Could be plants, could be um, humans, but hey, for this example, I took mouse. And we want to look on chromosome 3 um, between 15 to 45 megabases, right? Th that's the interesting region that we just decided that we are interested in. And so, for example, uh, we want to know what are the important genes at this location. Hey, what the, the, We want to get all of the genes in this region. Uh, we want to get their location. We want to get the number of exons that they contain. And for example, things like the number of functional SNPs inside of these genes that we are interested in. And so these are very common questions in bioinformatics when you are dealing with, um, hey, for example, you did a QTL mapping and you identify that this region of the mouse chromosome um, is controlling um, the length of the tail or the size of the ears of the mouse. And you now want to go and see, well, what gene might be responsible for that? And are there any variants in this gene region which might be causing this phenotype to be different between different mice um, that we have? All right. So. Um, in this case, we're starting to do R, and of course, when we create a new script, as always, you want to make a good header, right? So the header in the file, I, I wrote it down here, so I'm going to analyze mouse chromosome 3 in this region. Hey, it is copyrighted by me, it was first written then and was last modified. Hey, so this is kind of the standard information that I put in all my scripts, right? And after we've created a good header, uh, we load the Biomart library. Of course, we have to install it first. Um, and But after we've installed it, we can just load it. And then we have to set a working directory because we have to work at a certain path or at a certain part of our hard drive because we just don't want to save everything in C user documents. And so we, we set our working directory to where we want to store um, our data. So where we want to write files and where we want to read files. Although we're not going to read files um, because we're going to get our data from Biomart into R directly. All right, so now we need to um, connect to a Mart, right? And since we're interested in mouse and we're interested in genes and genomes, and then, then we can just connect to Ensemble. And so the first query that we do in, Mar, uh, in, uh, in, in R is say, well, use Mart Ensemble, and then what this will do, just like the database provider in RSQLite, it will give us back a connection object. So this connection object is a variable um, which contains the ability to do queries on. And so 
we can use the list data set function um, to list all of the data sets which are available on the ensemble uh, information provider. So the, the ensemble mart contains different data sets and had these data sets we want to just list. So we can use the list data sets and when we do that we get back something that looks like this. right? So it's a it's a massive list of all the different data sets that ensemble provides and you can see that most of them are um, name of the species that you are interested in, then an underscore, then a gene and then an underscore ensemble. So these are the names of the data sets in there. And then there's a little bit of a description because hey, who knows what an A mexicanus is? Well, it's actually a cave fish. I, I didn't know that. But hey, if, you, if you're interested in your species, then generally you know the scientific name. Hey, but if you don't, hey, then you can just look at this, this, this second column and this second column will contain the information uh, on what kind, of, uh, what kind of species you are looking at. The third column did you just say gay fish? No, no, I didn't say gay fish. I said cave fish, as in a fish that lives in a cave. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it. No, we're not. We're not talking about. Um, um, what's he called again? Kanye, Kanye West. No, we're not talking about Kanye West. We're not saying gay fish, although I just said gay fish. Uh, <laughs> so. If if the the <laughs> sorry um, now I'm from my uh, apropos um, so the first is the name of the data set uh, the second one is the uh, more or less uh, description um, <laughs> do you like fish sticks yeah I like fish sticks <laughs> all right come on people like it I know it's I know we're already at this for like two hours and and seventeen minutes or something like that but. Uh, um, Two hours and twenty minutes, actually. Um, so I'm using my overlay. I can see how long I stream. This I, I really like the thing. Um, but and so um, the the first column is the name of the data set. The second column is just a human readable description, um, which doesn't use the the official <laughs> term. And then the third column is the one that that is interesting and is is something that you have to more or less remember. And the thing that you have to remember is, of course which version of the database are we using, right? So you can see here, for example, that the gay fish database, the cave fish database is pmarinus underscore 7.0, right? So this is if we write a publication and we want to mention on which version of the genome we did this, uh, then we have to specify um, this, this in our publication. Right, so hey, we use Biomar to retrieve our genes, and we are using um, the uh, cave fish gene database version um, 7.0. And of course, for every different species, you have different versions, and they get updated independently of each other. All right, so that's the first thing, right? So hey, we go through this whole list, which is a long list, and uh, um, we, we actually... Um, don't have mouse. Oh yeah, here, all the way in the bottom. Mus musculus gene ensemble. I know it's very small, um, but it did, so hey, it contains the version of the mouse genome database that we're using. And so let's connect to this database. So again, we we call the use mart function, and this time we, we the first the first parameter is the um, uh, data provider that we want to collect to, and then the second uh, t uh, the second term or the second parameter of this function call is now the data set uh, that we want to connect to, right? And we again just override our MART object, um, and this this will now allow us to query uh, the attributes and the filters which are available for this data set, because of course different data sets have different attributes. Right? Every every one of these data sets is kind of a big Excel table with information, um, but some things are available for mouse, which might not be available for cow, um, and some things might be available for fish, which might not be available for mouse. And so we have to know uh, which attributes we can query um, and which filters we can use to ask uh, the, the database right so and um, as a tip normally there are like thousands of attributes um, so I generally focus on the first like 20 or 30 um, or I use the grep command uh, to search for something very specific uh, but just saying list attributes mart um, will just run down like a massive amount of data on your screen and then you have to scroll up and start looking and so it's generally the things that you want are in the first like 50 to 100 um, um, uh, attributes, because those are the most used attributes. 
So if we list the first 10 attributes um, from the MART, right, then we can see that we can retrieve things like the ensemble gene ID. We can retrieve things like the gene description, uh, the chromosome name, the start position, the end position. Um, is this gene on the positive strand or the negative strand? Um, on which band is this? And this is relatively old and I don't think we talked about this, but if, if it, in the old days when before sequencing become, became very, very um, well cheap, it's not cheap, but it's cheaper than it was, right? Um, but, but like 15 to 20 years ago, locations of genes would be by chromosomal band. So um, it would say 5P7Q3, uh, and this would describe where on the genome it was. And this is, this is based on more or less looking through a electron microscope at the chromosomes and then when you see the chromosomes in the electron microscope you see these little bandings and these bandings are due to higher and lower GC content um, but they used to originally use the bands to identify positions on of the genome um, and something like OMIM um, they, they still mention which band a certain association was or is on. Um, and then we can list the filters, so the filters are things like chromosome names, so we can filter down by chromosome, and we can filter down by start and end position, um, we can also filter by the bands of course, um, and we can use things like markers and we can filter based on strand, um, but the thing that of course we want, because we wanted to look at mouse genes, chromosome 3 from a certain position to a certain position, uh, number 9 is the filter that we want, right? Because the filter that we want is the chromosomal region, uh, which allows us to specify a chromosomal region saying 1, chromosome 1, double point from 100 base pairs to 10,000 base pairs on the negative strand. Or we can say from chromosome 1 from uh, 100,000 base pairs to 200,000 base pairs on the positive strand. Right, so the attributes are the things that you retrieve, the filters are the things that you are going to provide the database. And so the filter that we need is obvious, the obvious filter that we want to use here is chromosomal region because we're interested in mouse, we found a QTL, so we found an association, and now we want to kind of drill down which genes are there and, and which other things can we do with it. So let's define an initial value for our filter. So I'm just going to say that, okay, so I have to make a decision, right? Do I want to look at the positive strand or do I want to make look at the negative strand? But in this case, um, I just want to look at the positive strand, right? And normally you would look at both strands and you can actually drop the, th the, the fourth uh, parameter here. So you can just say three double point, 15 million, double point, 45 million, and then you close your string, um, but hit the last double point one, um, it, it, it allows you to say I want only positive or only negative strand, but you can just leave it out and then you get all of the genes. But for this example, I just said, well, let's limit ourselves to genes on the positive strand. Um, and um, I actually had a discussion with a PhD student recently who said, the next time that I'm going to look for a PhD position, I'm going to make sure that the gene that they are working on is on the positive strand. Because strandedness in DNA it just drives you crazy. If your gene is on a negative strand, uh, you will mess up the direction um, because it, it's just m it's much easier when your gene is on the positive strand. So hey, in this case, even though the gene, might, the causal gene might be on a negative strand, we're just limiting ourselves to forward strand. And of course, we want to try to retrieve all the genes that are there, so we, we, we try to retrieve gene IDs. And so I define my region, and then I define my attributes, so I just make a little variable, and the attributes that I want to retrieve are the ensemble gene ID. Right, so just, just give me the IDs of the gene in this region. Right, and now we can execute the, the query, and this is kind of the core of Biomart. So Biomart provides this get BM function, which is get from Biomart. Um, and, and so we execute the query using this function. So what we say is we say get Biomart, the attributes that I want to retrieve are my attributes, the filter that I'm going to use is chromosomal region, and the value that I'm going to provide the database is the my region. And then I have to specify in which MART I want to search. So I have to specify MART equals MART because my variable uh, that I defined, the connection variable, is called MART, right? We defined that before. Um, and so the MART is MART just means that use this information provider and this data set. So after I execute this query, I can of course just ask for the number of rows of the gene IDs because that's the variable that I store it in. So I get back a matrix and this matrix has 211 
rows, which means that there are 211 genes in the positive direction on the DNA in our region that we were interested in. So in the region chromosome 3 from 15 megabases all the way up to 35 megabases. And of course you could have done this in a different way, you could have gone to ensemble, you could have loaded all of the mouse genes and then load those into R and do the filtering yourself, yeah, but then of course you're spending a lot of time for something that Biomark just provides for you. So. So, of course, we can get our attributes, we can extend our attributes, we can add more attributes to get more information. Because getting the ID is not enough, have we, we also want to get some other information. For example, we might want to get the gene symbol, have, because normally you don't mention the nsmoosh G and then the ID, you just mention the, the mouse genome in information system symbol. And so, just like in humans, mouse genes have uh, names which are more or less... Um, uh, they are decided on by a committee and they're linked to humans had to to have a common vocabulary so when we talk about a certain gene everyone knows which genes you mean um, and then I'm getting the description of the gene as well I'm getting the chromosome name so because I want to know where the gene is located so I'm getting the chromosome name the start position of the gene and the end position of the gene and so I can just extend my attributes with making a little vector with all the things that I want to retrieve Again, I can use the getBiomart function, and here I show you the first 10 elements. And so what you see is that um, more or less the first gene located in this region, um, I don't know if the list is sorted by start position, probably not, probably just gives you back in a random order. Um, but had the first gene that is there, it's called uh, GM24704, and it is a predicted gene. So it's not a real gene, it's just the computer said that there was a gene or there this region looks like a gene, um, so hey, it doesn't have a, it's not a proper gene, so to speak, um, and it's located on chromosome 3 from here to here. You can also see that it gives back microRNAs and stuff, right? So why? That's, I didn't want any microRNAs or predicted genes. I was actually interested in real genes, right? Real genes which code for proteins, hey, because I have this association and I really want to find a gene um, and I don't want to deal with like things like microRNAs and, and just predictions, right? I want to make sure that it's real. So of course I can now do two things, right? I can um, add the biotype as a column yeah, so I'm just going to say um, my attributes and then I'm going to say comma uh, biotype and then it retrieves the biotype because the biotype is either um, microRNA, link RNA, predicted gene or protein coding gene, right? So a protein coding gene would be the thing that we are looking for. Um, and so you can add the biotype and do the filtering yourself in R, but you don't have to. And you can just make your filter more complex and you can filter for the genes biotype. And so instead of just retrieving all the genes, which includes microRNA and predicted genes, and we can just make our filter a little bit bigger and like we did with the attributes and to and tell the database that we are only interested in protein coding genes. So here this is a little bit different, so we have to define our filter saying that, well, we are going to now provide you with two pieces of information that we want to filter on. The first piece of information that we want to filter on is the chromosomal region, and the second piece of information that we want to filter on is the biotype, so the, the, the type of gene. Um, of course, now I have to define the values that I want to search for, and here you have to be careful because this now needs to be a list. Because you can provide multiple regions, right? I, I don't have to limit myself to one region, and I don't have to limit myself to one biotype. I could specify three biotypes or two. I could say give me all the protein coding genes and microRNAs. Um, but because this can be a vector and this can be a vector hey, if I want to now define my values then I have to use the list function hey, because the list function can store in the first element the um, a, a vector which contains all of the regions that I'm querying and in the second element of the list so in the second uh, part of the list I can say multiple things like protein coding microRNA and then these I call my values. And then again, I just do the query. So I'm saying, give me the attributes. Uh, the filter that I want is my filter. The value is my values, right? That is the variables that I define. And again, query from the same biomart. All right, so then the question can be answered. So how many protein coding genes did we now find in this region? Well, we just look at the number of rows of, of, of what we retrieved. Um, and it tells me that there are 58 genes uh, on the forward strand on the mouse chromosome 3 from this position to that position.
Um, and then we can start with uh, with the next part, right? And the next part, what we wanted to know, well, for each gene, we want to know how many exons it has, and we want to know how many SNPs are located in the exon, so how many SNPs are there which have a possibility to change the protein, uh, it, so to change the amino acid. All right, so let's retrieve the gene data, or let's retrieve the exons first, hey, because we need to know the exon locations before we can query SNPs. Hey, we have the gene start and end position, of course, hey, but of course a gene has introns and exons, and we're not generally not interested in, in, in SNPs which are located in introns, hey, we're only interested in exons, um, which are hey, so parts of the, of the protein, or parts of the, the DNA which are coding for the protein. So, 58 protein coding genes and of course hep, we want to use the computer and so we need to go through the different genes and so we can use the ensemble gene ID now as the filter and then we can query per gene information right so we we are going to write a for loop and in each loop we're going to request all the exons which belong to that gene and hep, how do I do that well I'm just going to say well I now want to retrieve gene specific attributes, so I'm calling this gene attribute, so what do I want to retrieve? Well, I want to retrieve the ensemble gene ID, I want to retrieve the exon ID, I want to retrieve the exon, the exon start and the exon end position. Yeah, of course I don't have to ask for the, the exon chromosome uh, because I already know that I'm only working on chromosome 3, but you could add the chromosome to it if you are um, querying multiple regions at the same time. So what do we do? Well, we say just for gene in the gene IDs that we got back, right? So I'm just using the, the data that I got back from Biomart. So what I'm going to do? Well, I'm going to now provide Biomart with the ensemble gene ID. So hey, I'm telling it that you will get an ensemble gene ID from me. Which ID am I providing? Well, that's, that's the, this gene value, right? Because we're going through the list one by one. And the attributes that I want to retrieve are the gene attributes. Yeah, so when I when I run this little piece of code and now I, I put in a cut here had to just um, so the cut here says well show the gene name and then show how many axons we retrieved so for example for the first gene so three nine three three five um, have we retrieved 13 axons the next gene has 16 axons and the next gene has eight right so this this is very easy very quick and have just a very basic for loop um, and, and, and we just retrieve the data directly and if I save my code and run it in like two weeks um, then numbers might change right because data about genomes is always progressing yeah? so someone might find that this gene actually has not 13 exons but 16 and so then this number will automatically update um, and I don't have to do anything for that all right so um, for the final question, how many SNPs are there? Um, so the, the, the SNPs are actually in another mart. So they are not in the gene mart, which is logical, they are in the DB SNP mart. Yeah, so they are they are they are a part of ensemble, but they are not um, um, they are not in the same data set. So there's a different data set, um, and they're actually in a different mart, so they're actually in a different data provider. So ensemble as a data provider itself provides you gene and exon and these kinds of information but if you want to connect to SNPs um, then the MART that you want to use is called Ensemble MART SNP um, and then hey, of course we want to look at the mouse SNPs so that is uh, the musculus SNP and we just call this SNP MART instead of the MART so we don't want to override uh, the old one yeah, so. so when we do this hey, we can say SNP MART is use MART Ensemble SNP MART take the SNPs from mouse and then we, of course we can list the attributes again and here we see that we can get the ref SNP ID so the RS ID we can get the source we can get the description the name the, the start the end the, 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 the strand at which it located the alleles say, so is it a CT SNP or is it a, a TA SNP or a GC SNP um, and then we can also get things like R is this SNP validated hey, so what information is in the database that supports that this SNP is real hey, like how many people have reported this SNP, if it's only found by, by one group from uh, Afghanistan, then of course yeah. you're not really going to trust that SNP, although it might be real, but you don't know, but if this SNP has been reported by 15 different groups from, from Harvard to Oxford to, to other like well-known universities, like the prestigious Humboldt University, and then of course and then the validated gives you more, uh, more certainty than that this is real. And of course we, we have to list our filters, how can we 
how can we tell the database what we want to retrieve right and here again we see that we can use the chromosomal region and in this case we would want to use the chromosomal region again because we have for each exon the chromosome the start position and the end position so hey, there's no filter actually here for ensemble gene id because SNPs are not coupled to genes they are they are located on the genome um, has so we need to use the exon start and end position and so we can query all the SNPs using the chromosomal region again um, and then we can filter um, again based on things like the consequence type so the consequence type could be uh, um, non-synonymous right as in changing the amino acid structure hey, but we could also filter based on for example the SIFT score so the SIFT score is a prediction of how impactful uh, this this um, the impact will be and and this is left as an exercise for you guys uh, because I've been been talking already for a long time like two hours and 40 minutes um, and hey, you have to do something during the exercises as well so hey, the exercises will be using Biomart uh, to retrieve uh, part of the of the SNP database and uh, filter down all right tier why, why tier is there a tier oh that's interesting yeah you see the mood box it actually went wrong why is there sometimes weird I found a bug. Yeah, you're hacking my mood box. Don't hack my mood box. Don't don't do that. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Um, I I can I can fix that later on. There's no reward. No, there's no reward for finding bugs. Um, well, eternal gratitude. That's a reward in itself, right? All right. So uh, today I told you about why we need to use databases, what the organization of databases is, what features do they have. Testosaurus, you need to use capital letters. And and don't shout poop in my, my chat. Don't shout poop. That like I'm not gonna ban you or, or put you on a timeout, but um. <laughs> it has to be a single word. You have to do like this. <laughs> All right, so I told you about databases, organization, features, types of databases, list some important databases, some examples, and I told you about Biomart and the examples that belong to that. So that's more or less it for today. Um, so are there any questions? And actually, welcome to the stream, uh, uh, Testosaurus. Welcome to the stream. Um, and um, questions? I, I will actually stop the recording now, and then we can just use the last, like, 20 minutes.